as a lot of you know, uh, the pastor went into the hospital or went to the hospital last night, and he was admitted this morning, about five o'clock. And you need to be praying for our pastor that God will heal him and raise him back up. And uh, he asked, they asked me to teach this morning, and I'm always happy, and God has already prepared a lesson. I was already ready. Uh, it's one nice thing about when you study to type it out or write it out, because you never know when you're going to need it. And I'll, when I do that, I, guys at work will ask me questions about certain things about the Bible, and I'll just print it out for them, and here you go, study away. Because the Word of God has power. David Balance doesn't have any power. David Balance don't have nothing. David Balance is just an idiot. Uh, but it's the Word of God that has the power and the Holy Spirit that, that uh, enlightens men. The name of my lesson today will be Warning of God concerning the ungodly. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'll be with our pastor, Lord. I pray that you'll heal him and raise him up, Lord. Lord, we know he's just a man, but he's your man, Lord, and we need him. And the world needs him. And Lord, we pray that you'll raise him back up and bring him back to us, Lord, safe and full of strength. And Lord, I pray that the power of God will be upon him. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you'll bless me with the power of, of the Holy Spirit in teaching this lesson, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll take this stammering tongue, Lord, and Help it to be clear and concise, Lord. And Lord, I pray for the gift of teaching. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take this word. Because Lord, we can't do nothing without you, Lord. We're nothing. But you're everything. And your Holy Spirit's the only one that can convince men of their sins. I pray that you'll bless this teaching. Bless each and every one that's here and those who are listening on the internet. For us in Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Romans chapter 11, verse 25, it says that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles um, he be, be come in. That means that in the process of time, God allows man to hang himself. God gives man enough rope to where he has to judge man. And this country started out uh, as a godly nation, Amen. and now it's about to hang itself. We've allowed sin to come into this country, and sin is progressive. It doesn't just happen overnight. It progressively moves in, and your way of thinking towards sin starts to lighten up, and you start to be conformed to the image of the world instead of the image of Christ, when you allow this sin to stay in your life. And then God says that he has to bring judgment. In the world history, you look at all the world's greatest empires and you look at how wickedness settled in and how depraved man became and how God had to bring judgment on those nations. We look at the Tower of Babel and we look at Babylon, we look at Egypt, we look at uh, the... Uh, Nineveh, all those nations had a cycle that they went through, and they started out as a civilization, and then they got more perverse as they went, and finally they got so perverse that God had to destroy them, had to take them out of the way. And America is heading down that path. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, 
But the end is not yet, for nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, and we have sorrows in this land. Most of America doesn't know that we're at the edge of World War III. Most people don't know that all the nations of the world are gathering together for war. But America is so obsessed with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump that we don't know that our end is at, at hand. We've become so perverse in this country that we're more concerned about the Rainbow Coalition than we are about <laughs> turning back to God. And we think that by thinking that everything is okay with God that we're righteous and you're farther from the truth. We're, we're, we're a nation of demons. I can't even show, I, I send out video after videos week after week of what's going on in the world to a group of people and I hope they distribute that. Most of them don't even watch them because I get, I send so many out. But a lot of them I can't even send out because they're so nasty and so dirty and so vile that I don't want my name attached to it. But we are a nation of short memories. We don't remember what happened last week. We don't, have, we don't know what happened a month ago or last year. But you look around and you see all this stuff happening and what are we doing about it? Absolutely nothing. The church is not saying anything. But we got a pastor that actually gets up and says something. Thank God for our pastor. You look around and you see these, uh, you see uh, Russia preparing for nuclear war and Gorbachev say, telling the world that nuclear war is inevitable, that it's going to happen. Yeah. Russia's already said they're going to fight Europe, but they're going to have to nuke us. And Russia has the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. So we have wars and rumors of wars, and we're ready for annihilation in this world. We're ready for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back for his church. And if you're not saved, you're on your way to a godless hell. Many of you don't even know that, that the biggest thing on the news outside of America is the fish kills. How many of you know about the fish kills? Lakes where all the fish die and no one knows why. Fowls of the air falling out of the sky and landing hundreds and thousands of them laying on the ground. Beasts of the field dying by the hundreds of thousands. And no one knows why, and they're not reporting this. In Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 3, it says, I will consume man and beast, and I will consume the fowls of the heavens and the fish of the sea and the, and the stumbling blocks which with the wicked, and I will cut off man from the land, saith the Lord. Hosea chapter 4, verse 3, Therefore shall the land and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heavens, yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. God is preparing. God is saying, I'm coming back. Get ready. And if you're not ready, get ready for a godless hell. Amos chapter 4 verse 6. I also have given you cleanness of teeth in your cities and want, and, and want of bread in your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord, and I will withhold in the rain. We're in a drought. How many people have thought about, Lord, let's pray for rain? Probably didn't cross most people's minds. Verse 9 says, I have smitten you with, blasted you with mildew. When your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase, the palmer, palmer wood worm devoureth them. Look at the, the plight. If you get your, uh, a lot of people drink orange juice in the morning, and it's probably one of the worst things you can drink for your diet, but people like orange juice. 
the containers are getting smaller because the supply is diminishing, because they're dying of mildew and worms, plights. Why is all this happening? In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, verse 25, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power of the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We've turned away from God. In this country, we rejected God, so God's rejecting us as a nation. You see, this, this, this thing they call election is nothing but a fiasco. I wouldn't give you two cents for either side, but you've got to vote for the lesser of the two evils. But I don't think it's going to make any difference. The more I study about the governments of this world, the more I understand that they're not run by these, these clowns they put in the White House. It's run by the, the God, the prince of power of the air. And most churches and most homes that you go into, you really can't tell the difference, even Christian homes. We listen to, to rock and roll music, we listen to all this garbage, and then we think, well, it's not that bad. Everything vexes your soul. Everything draws you away from God. That's, that's not of, of this, this word called the Bible. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made to corruptible men and to the birds and the four-footed beasts and the creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own eyes to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into lies and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That's America. We've turned away from God. We have Earth Day. We have Green Day. We got all this stuff about these pagan gods and we bring every god in the world into this country and look what it's done for us. Turned us into a hellhole. The unjust have no shame. There's no shame in, in the unjust. People who turn themselves over to a reprobate mind have no shame. They're not ashamed of what they do. They're ashamed of you because of the way you think. If you're godly. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5 says, The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. That's what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. They gloried in their shame. They gloried in their sin. And God turned, them, turned it over to destruction and rained fire and brimstone out of heaven and destroyed and made it the deepest part of the earth. They made a covenant with hell. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, says, Because they have said, We have made a covenant with death and with hell, are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come upon us, for we have made lies our refuge, and, under, and falsehood have we hid ourselves. They're just lying to themselves. God's judgment's coming. God is going to judge this nation. Amen. And God is going to destroy the ungodly. Amen. And the only way you can escape is through the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. and through his atonement. Man thinks if I plead ignorance, God will overlook it because I'm just a dumb human being and I don't know the things of God. That means squat to God. God gave us his word. We've had it for 2,000 years. And if you can't find a copy in America, you're a one sorry individual. 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Everything that comes out of man's mouth is vile. You watch our president speak. You watch our, our leaders speak, and it's all vile. Romans chapter 1, 28, even, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That's the way our, our, our government is. That's the way our, our society is. They're reprobates. They've rejected God in all manners of their minds, so God gives them over to a reprobate mind to do that and to think that they're doing good when they do it. There are four things that God, that brings judgment on, on this earth. The glorifying of the unga ungodliness. The pride in unrighteousness. Suppression of the truth. And we see that in our pulpits every day. Worship creatures rather than the creator. You know when, when, when the Jews were in Egypt, they had this river, and they worshipped that river. And they worshipped everything in that river. And all the creatures in that river, they worshipped. They didn't think that maybe we ought to worship the creator of that river rather than the river. In America, we worship, in a lot of cases, people worship the hand-me-downs from the government. Instead of worshiping God and asking God to provide, they want the government to provide for them. We're no different from those Egyptians in this country. Titus 1.16 says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and to every good work a reprobate. It starts with the preaching. That's where it starts. It starts in the homes. And it's not being done. And our country is sliding down that slippery slope into oblivion, into judgment. Second Timothy 3, 5 says, Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir, I know that. But we're in, we're in terrible shape. Amen. When you see some of the stuff I see on the, on the internet, yeah. how does God put up with it? This country is not, doesn't deserve to be saved. We don't. We had the truth. We had the churches. We, we had goodness in this country, but the goodness is gone. You can't even watch TV. You can't watch sitcoms today. They're all vile. They're all full of homosexuals. They're full of blasphemy. They're full of all the, the scourge of the earth. 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrines. And today, to believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, they laugh at you. To believe that he is the son of God, they, they say, well, he was a good man. He was a good prophet, but he wasn't the son of God. He's just a man just like everybody else. Well, then if he was, we're lost in our sins. The glue that holds the churches together is prayer, and most churches don't pray anymore. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit and watching their prayers unto with all preservedness, I can't say that word, and supplication to all saints. We're supposed to pray for each other. We're supposed to be praying for our pastor. And one thing about, one thing about illness, you know, we, we get tied up and we get people in our church that are sick. But let me tell you something about illness. When you get, get bad news, thank God. 
say, Lord, thank you for this. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be drawn closer to you. Because if you talk to some of these people that had cancer, they're the closest thing to God that you'll ever find. Because they've given up hope in this world, and they start looking to Jesus Christ. And they start praying, and they become a testimony for Christ in the way they, 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 they draw closer to him. And that's what we're supposed to do. And don't, don't, you know, y'all be happy that God thinks enough of you to make you sick. Some of the best times I've, best times I've ever grown in the Lord is when my wife's sick or I'm sick. We should love illness. I know it's hard to say, but that's the truth. You know why people get older? Because they get older and they get sicker and they get older, feeble, and they have to rely on one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. I just had to throw that in there. You don't learn to pray until someone in your family gets sick. Prayer has been rejected not only by our government, but by our homes and our churches and our schools. And if you find it hard to pray for this country, which I do, Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 16 says, Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither maketh intercession to me, for I will not hear it. And that's where America's at. You can pray for this country all you want. You can vote for all these different leaders, and it ain't going to change a thing. Because the heart of man is so wicked and so vile in this country that God has turned away from it. We've had everything. And look at us today. Abortion is just a symptom of man's heart. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 17, it says, A proud look and a lying tongue and a hand that sheddeth innocent blood. There's nothing more innocent than the womb of a woman or a child in a woman's womb, a mother's womb. But that's the most dangerous place a person can be right now is in the womb of its own mother. Think about it. It's killed more than all the world, all the world wars put together. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 10 says, The innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. There's a curse to it. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 25, says, The curse be he that taketh away and slay an innocent person. And like I said, there's nothing more innocent than an unborn child. We're so vile in this country that we take those innocent ch children that have been aborted and we cut their body parts and sell them to scientists. We take their blood and we sell it on the market. And these old rich people that want to live forever, they take that blood and they inject it into these old people to rejuvenate them. And that's how sick our country is. We've become a country of cannibals. Think about it. It starts, it started in the beginning. Exodus chapter 1 verse 22, when Pharaoh of Egypt told all the, the Jewish women to take their newborn sons and cast them into the Nile River. But you're going to save the women because the blood doesn't go from, from the woman to the child, it's the father. And they're trying to destroy God's line. And then they started taking their, their seed to Moloch and casting it to, to, the, to the god Moloch. And Solomon, with all of his wisdoms, fell into that trap and created uh, temples to Baal and to Moloch, and the children of Israel were passed through the fire. And what are we doing? We condemn them for that. We say, oh, that's terrible. We're doing the same thing in this country. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, 
that believe in me, it is better for him that a miles, millstone be hung around his neck and cast into the sea. You don't mess with little babies. The law of God has been kicked out of this country. In Romans chapter 7, verse 22, it says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You know, we, we try to take the law and we try to say, well, we're saved by grace, just push it out of the way. But the law teaches you how to live, how to, do, how to act, how to be a, a godly person. And there are 613 laws in the Old Testament. And all those laws, a lot of them, you know, we've taken them and pushed them off to the side, but they're, they're good laws. I mean, they're, they're stuff to live by. But we've taken them into church and we've made light of them. So we're, we're under grace now. We can do whatever we want. Well, that's ridiculous. We're supposed to live godly lives. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. What you do when, in your Christian life is you take, you take grace, which, were, which preserves us, gives us the, gives us the ability to obey the law. Without grace, you can't obey the law. Israel proved that. You have to have the grace of God, but you, you embrace the law of God, and you say, Lord, through your power and through your will and through your grace, I'm going to live this life pleasing to you. But the world says don't do it. This world's rejected God. And the pastor reads this verse a lot. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget thy children, and our children have been forgotten. You know, the Bible says that in the, in the law, it says that every there'll be four generations. God will punish the father to the third and fourth generation. How long was Israel in, in the land of Egypt? They were in there for 400 years. That's four generations. Why was, what did they do to get in there? They took Joseph and they, they, they sold him into slavery. So God punished them by selling them into slavery to the fourth generation. And then he brought them out. And it all comes down to this, this one verse in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the, uh, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now this ties in with Romans chapter 1. The lust of the flesh is sexual perversion. And you say, well, how does that happen? Well, first of all, a person lusts after somebody. And then they get through that one. They commit adultery. And then the lust of the eye just keeps getting worse and worse. And you start making exceptions for more farther and farther along until, until God turns you over to reprobate mind and you find yourself with the same sex. In sexual perversion, Romans chapter 1, verse 24, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Two, they're given over to vile pa uh, passions, the lust of the eye. 
homosexuality. Romans chapter 1, verse 26, it says, For this cause God gave them over to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. Three, given over to a debased mind, pride of life. When you get to that point, you're finished. When you're proud of your sin and proud of what you're doing behind closed doors or in open doors or whatever you're doing, God turns you over to a reprobate mind. In Romans chapter 1, verse 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That's where our country is today. We're at the very end of that. We're on our way to judgment. And if you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't have a, a, a relationship with him, you're on your way to a devil's hell. Amen. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22 Thou shalt not lie, lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination. Correct. You find it again in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. It's all through the Bible. And he said, well, it's not found in the New Testament. Oh, you're wrong. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 10 says, For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, with men stealers, with liars, with per perjured persons, and if there be any others thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. First Corinthians chapter six verse nine says, "Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God?" You say, "Well, a safe person can go get into sin." Yeah. But here it says you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That means if you do get to heaven, you ain't going to have no inheritance. You're going to have zilch. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, uh, nor, adulterers, nor effeminates, nor abusers of themselves with mankind will inherit the kingdom of God. So you might think that you're pulling one over on God, but you're, you're, it's far from it. God knows your heart. God knows where you're at. This, this world is full of narcissists. We have our, people are so consumed with themselves that all they can think about is themselves. You see it in the workplace all the time. People get mad because they don't get what they want because they think they ought to have the easy job, and you, you work hard. Well, heck, I'm 62 years old. I've been doing the same thing for almost 40 years. I'm tired. I should have the easy job. But they think that they should have the easy job because they're young and, you know, whatever. But people are so consumed with themselves and so consumed with, you know, you got these people walk around all day and walk into ponds and walk off in the street, walk into traffic, look at their stupid cell phones. People texting. They don't talk no more. They just text and try to be clever on their texts. I only text one time. And it was to my son just a couple weeks ago because my wife was busy. She's driving. I don't like to drive. But the whole world is consumed with themselves. And the Bible says that they'll be lovers of themselves. And so it is. And it gets worse. But you have the Nineveh principle. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 7 through 8, it says, At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it, if a nation against whom I have pr pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I have thought to do unto them. But you see, Nineveh is no longer existing. And America is not about to repent. America is so tied up in themselves and so concerned with themselves. I heard a guy on the radio talking the other day, talking about, you know, if the economy collapses and whatnot. He says, well, I got all kinds of guns. If, if you got what I need, I'm going to take it. That's the attitude of today's people. 
If you got it, I'm going to take it. Yeah. Well, after I'm gone to glory in the rapture, hopefully, they can have all I got. I don't need it no more. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. I love this verse. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. And America's not about to do that. Don't hold your breath. But my people, even the churches won't do it. Churches are so caught up in their programs and to their big buildings and, and their uh, big crowds, they don't care about anything. God says he's coming back. And I believe him. And I believe the rapture is right around the corner. I heard a preacher preaching on the internet the other day and he's saying that uh, he doesn't believe it's going to make it past December of next year I hope he's wrong I hope it's this year (laughs) I hope it's right today be a wonderful day to be taken out of here wouldn't it Isaiah chapter 63 verse 3 says I have trodden down the winepress alone and of the people there was none with me For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The Lord Jesus Christ is about ready to come back. Are you ready? Let me see the hands of all the people in this place that are ready. You know, I talk to young people all the time. They go, well, I just, I, I, hope, I hope I get to buy a house. I want a child first. The first thing I told my son when you have a child is your heart will be changed towards heaven because you don't want your child to grow up in this world. You want it to grow up at the glory, and that's the way it is. That's where my heart's at. Where's yours? When you talk to people at work and in a workplace, do you talk about UT football or do you talk about the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. Now, I stepped on some toes. I know. I got a son that loves UT. I could care less. <laughs> hey, they win last night. <laughs> but it's all about Jesus Christ. And if we don't center ourselves on him, We're losing out. We're losing an inheritance. Everything we do for Christ is going to last. And it's got large dividends. And most people don't even care about those dividends. Most people just want to go on their merry way, do what they want to do in this little vapor that we live in. And one day this vapor is going to go poof and it's gone. And you will be standing before God. But anyway... I really enjoyed this lesson. I've been working on it for months. My wife told me not to tell this, but last night I finished up a little thing on it, and then God says, copy it out, put it in your, your uh, little folder. I said, okay, God. And then I got a call at 5 o'clock this morning. Pastor's in the hospital. Pray for our pastor. People just don't realize in this church until you get on the internet and start searching. This man is recorded, 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 and sent out and sent out and sent out all over the world. And I I send videos to a lot of you in here, and each one of them I'll I'll mark it when he's in it. I'll say, Pastor Lawson is narrating this video with his sermons. And you just don't realize what an impact this church is having on the world. And one day, each one of us will receive a reward for our hand in it. Try to get involved. Get involved in the things of God. We're we're running out of time.
And if, if you saw how vile this world is, oh, my. It's horrible. I mean, it's horrible. We have people come from all over the country every week searching for food. And I pray that they weren't disappointed today. Because we all need meat. We all need to be fed. Be sure to pray for our pastor today. Pray that God will bring him back. I'm sure he will. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for telling us ahead of time what's going to happen so that we're not left in darkness, that we can see that you're coming as you approach. And we hear the trumpets about to blow, and we can see the, the handwriting on the wall that time is out run out. Lord, help us and help those who are lost in their sins, Lord. I know we get calloused and, and our hearts get hardened, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll soften our hearts. and Lord, help us to, to realize that we don't want to be here after you've come for your church. We don't want to be forced to, to die for your name, but Lord, if it be your will, so be it. But help us, Lord, to, to receive Christ while the time is still here. Blessed be your holy and righteous name. Bless our pastor, Lord. Raise him up. And Lord, I pray for the speaker after this, Lord, that you'll put the power of the Holy Spirit in him, and Lord, let him preach with power. For asking Jesus Christ, amen.